Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. This is VWIN's Double Reads by Acoustic Samples, a sample-based library with a collection of double reed instruments containing two oboes, two English horns, two bassoons, and a contrabassoon. These instruments continue Acoustic Samples' saga into the world of solo orchestral instruments, each iteration bringing with it something new. In this review, I'll cover each instrument's sounds and articulations, as well as some notable features like harmonic alignment technology, virtual space, formant control. The library costs $1.99 at the time of this video. Just like their other V-Series instruments, V-Wins Double Reads has a small footprint, coming in at only 710 megabytes for all seven instruments. And as you can see, the loaded amount is even lower than that. So let's get into it. This uses the free UVI workstation player, which is the host software that holds your libraries and has all the effects and presets contained within. So here is Oboe, and I'm gonna play a little bit of that for you. Now again, this is sample based. It's performed by a real oboe player, world-class artist, and it sounds beautiful to me. First thing I noticed was how expressive it is. Because they use their harmonic alignment technology, you don't hear the transitions between dynamic layers. It just sounds really smooth. Another thing I like is the legato transitions. When you hold one note over the other, it cuts it off, and then when you let it go, you'll hear the first note played. This also makes it easy to create legato transitions when programming the notes. If I wanted to make these notes play more legato, all I have to do is highlight these first notes and slightly overlap them. V winds will take care of the rest. Before I could hear that every note had an attack on it. Now when they overlap, it automatically makes it smooth. Here in the red we have our key switches. And here in the white, we have our playing range for the instrument. I'm going to go ahead and click on Oboe 2. This is going to give me a slightly different timbre. To this day, I'm not sure what C1 does. However, C2 is a fall. And this is velocity sensitive. E flat 1 or D sharp 1 is a doit. E1 is a note repeat. F is a bend down. And this is going to apply to all their double reed instruments. F sharp is bend up. And it does it by half step. And then A1 is a breath. And we have the mix page, which lets you have different mic positions. So mic one is going to be the closest. Having different mic distances is going to bring out certain characteristics in the instrument. So this one is going to be detailed, whereas mic three will be a little thinner. You can mix them as well. Then you have a virtual space EQ, which is going to EQ the sound of the virtual space here, which I'll get into in just a bit. This is a very sensitive EQ. And then you can choose your type of space, virtual space room or this list of different size rooms, Capitol Hall, Cathedral.
The virtual space is a really cool feature in this plugin because you can set the instrument anywhere and it's going to give you a true representation of that instrument relative to the mic placement. So here it is, and I'm going to select one of these chairs, maybe over here, and then it's going to sound like it's in that location. Let's move them over here. This is also going to be affected by the mic position. So right now it's AB wide. We're going to choose ORTF, which is right above the conductor's head. With this one, you're going to hear a better representation of where the player is located. Then you have AB and XY. As with their other V instruments, you can adjust the settings to make this instrument behave more naturally. For example, you can set your maximum glide interval. So right now, I think it's 24 semitones. That's two octaves. Note pitch imprecision affects the tuning of the note. So not every note is going to be in tune. If you set it to 100%, it's going to sound very out of tune. That sounds really bad. Maybe you might want a little bit, especially if you have multiple oboes playing at the same time. You don't want them all to sound exactly alike. And then attack pitch variation. That's going to be the initial attack before it gets in tune. You could also randomize it with this die. Attack pitch variation time is how long does it take before it gets in tune? So this is affected by attack pitch variation. This is MP compatible. I don't have that type of device, so I'm not going to show you that. And then legato transitions, velocity to attack sustains. It increases the accent. So the higher the value, the stronger the accent. This might be a little hard to hear. It's very subtle. So it's more even when it's all the way down and then it has that little accent at the beginning when it's all the way up. And then velocity to attack legatos is gonna affect the sound of each new note if you're playing legato transitions. So right here you don't hear it. On that one it's very subtle but every new note has an accent. Now velocity to attack time is going to affect the length of that accent. So the lower ones are going to have a long or slow attack and the high velocities are going to have a quick attack. I'm not sure the point of the transition flutter it adds flutter to the legato and it doesn't sound good to me but it's an option there if you want it. Just like their other libraries, you can design your own vibrato, and this has a very natural sounding vibrato. You can set the duration, how long it takes to actually start playing vibrato. You can set it immediate, smoothen it, or reset it. And that's going to reset with every new note. You can set the volume of the modulation, how much the pitch is going to fluctuate, and the vibrato speed. The higher the value, the faster the vibrato. You can add growl key noises and set round robin to three times alternate or smart. This is going to affect the way it chooses the samples so that you're not repeating the exact same sample and getting the machine gun effect. Now this has something called formant control. It's like a parametric EQ. Um, if you want certain frequencies to stand out, 
or change the tonal characteristic of your instrument. You can enable it. You can reset it here and you can save it to whatever way you want. Finally, in the multi section, you can load multiple instruments. And if I want them on the same channel and I want them to harmonize, I'm going to go back here, preferences, and I'm going to set it to transpose. I'm going to set my scale to major or whatever mode you want it to be in. and it's going to harmonize. Now this is not something I use. I prefer to play all my harmonies myself, but it's a very cool feature. This also comes with presets. So if you want to hear what this instrument could sound like, one really cool thing is that if you play short notes, it's going to trigger a staccato. All right, let's go ahead and listen to the other instruments. So here is the lower version of the Nobo, the English horn. Although I bet some people would argue that it's not. It has a very different timbre. What a beautiful instrument. Here's English horn two. Bassoon. Bassoon sounds beautiful, but it can also have a really goofy sound. It's kind of quirky. And then bassoon two. Now they have different timbres, but you can create your own again in the formant control. This is something you'd have to play around with. I like that you can hear the keys clicking. That sounds really cool. And then the lowest instrument in this group and the lowest instrument in an orchestra, the contrabassoon. That sound of the keys clicking is so satisfying. And by the way, you can take it out right here in general. Or raise it. You could also change the sound of the air. It sounds beautiful. These instruments sound great to me. And the virtual space is a neat feature. I do really love these controls right here. The pitch. These are some that I would find more useful in my day-to-day -day work if I have especially if I have multiple instruments playing at the same time I don't want them to sound exactly the same the vibrato I would also adjust a little bit and definitely add a key noise the virtual space is a very neat feature if you're focused on just the double read instruments otherwise I usually like using a third-party reverb all in all this is a great purchase it's only $1.99 for seven instruments it's not taxing on your computer, yet it sounds expressive and realistic. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel and notification bell to stay up to date with my latest videos. Leave a comment below, tell me what you thought about this, and feel free to share this video wherever you want.
And please remember to visit hi-fi-midi.com and check out my MIDI programming courses. Thanks. See you next time.